hi everyone a very good evening okay let's start with my intro first i'm krishna i am having close to 15 years of it experience and i worked in multiple unix technologies right from unix shell scripting to python perl whatnot and i worked on data science machine learning as well and recently i started working on the aws cloud and from last two and a half years i'm associated with edureka and it's a great journey so far now let's come to today's topic today's our topic is how to perform sentiment analysis using python so first of all just to ask you a question why you think sentiment analysis is important any idea i'm not asking the technology like for example a simple example could be let's say i actually introduced a product let's say i introduced a new product called alexa just an example it's already introduced by amazon that's a different story now how do i get to know whether customer is liking it or scolding it now all that I come to know only when I do some kind of get some kind of customer response, right? So this is all to understand my customer better so that next time even if I fail once I can improve it, right? And if I fail also, I know the reasons of why I fail. That's the main reason you have to understand the customer emotions. So how do you understand customer emotions? That's where this technology helps where sentiment analysis is one type of machine learning where it helps you analyze what is that customer thinking because when you do it on a period of time you cannot go and check in each and every social media network whatsapp twitter and all you cannot jump in and check what is happening there what customer is saying it is quite impossible to track so that's where these machine learning technologies help where they will do automatically for you and send you the response and that's where companies like amazon or google or apple when they release the product they know how customers are thinking about it because they do conduct these kind of surveys and they come to know what customers are thinking about these products maybe from the customer reviews maybe from the customer tweets happening in different social media network uh, i'm not sure if you are aware the kindle the famous kindle which is a, a reading book uh, the device uh, contains a lot of books and you can read books online so just using uh, the device there used to be a you know kindle used to be having one kind of software that used to get response from customer across all the social media network that's a really a good software somebody has done so it is all to improve customer experience guys so that they know the customer better and improve it over a period of time so that's why it is very important to understand customer emotion so when i say sentiment analysis it is nothing but understanding what is customer opinion about it when i say sentiment it doesn't mean the sentiment which you uh, really hear about in movies whatever it is about what is that emotion is it like happy or is it unhappy or is it like neutral those kind of emotions that's why it is very that's what we are going to learn on how generally it happens at a high level i mean there's a lot we can learn about it but at a high level we are going to learn this is called as actually opinion data mining or emotional ai these are other names for the same topic now let's move on this is the topic sphere this is our agenda for today we will understand about what is machine learning then we will understand why sentiment analysis which we already understood now and then we'll understand what exactly is sentiment analysis then we'll understand how does it work and we'll see from an example how it actually categorizes and if time permits we will see if there is a hands on now let's start so what is machine learning so machine learning is the science of understanding patterns from the data where it understands pattern from the data it's like it understand what is the rule to get an output from an input it understands that pattern and it generalizes so that it can provide it can able to answer any questions on the new data as well not only it understands the pattern or generalized it but it also able to predict the new data uh, but it on the new data whenever given by experience that means by learning from different examples it can do that also so overall if you see machine learning is all about two key things one is generalizing rules or coming up with patterns Another is able to predict when it has seen the new data which it was has never seen provided it has the same pattern like the data it has seen. That's why it is called of science of learning from example and improving it over a period of time. That's what machine learning is and when you say machine learning it's all about bunch of algorithms which are capable of doing this job where it can generalize where it can come with patterns and at the same time when the new data is given they can able to predict. That's what machine learning is all about. Now, what are the different types of machine learning we have? We have something called supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. So, what is supervised learning is when we say supervised learning, it is as simple as, like for example, when I ask you a question, and let's say I asked you what is two into two, and you said six, 
then I might correct you saying no no it is 2 into 2 is 4. So what I'm doing here I'm asking you a question and when you give a wrong answer I'm telling you this is not the right way to do. So I'm guiding you right. So that's supervision I'm doing the same thing if it happens in the world of computers that's what called supervised learning is. That means you have somebody who helps you guide you that this is correct or this is wrong. How it happens actually in the computer is you will have a set of input data as well as output data which is what we call label data where it all talks about hey when you have this 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 information this means this like for example you can say let's say there is a set of data set is all about animal images so now you have a data set which is talking about when animal like dog is there it will have a tail it will be look it, it will its face looks like this and it has two eyes some kind of features of it if you tell it and if it the all the feature matches if you say it is a dog Similarly, if you do the same thing for cat every other feature that talks about cat if you put so each row in that data set is telling me about a feature of a, a particular animal that way my machine learning algorithm what it is able to do is here the teacher is the input data and the output data which is the cat or dog. So from here it is able to learn that's what the supervision there is now when it comes to unsupervised learning. Yeah categories of animals. Yeah classification. Now when it comes to unsupervised learning it is like as simple as self learning that means without teacher just like Einstein Einstein also learned from his mother. That's a different story, but it's like a self learning. You might have heard some people saying I learned myself. Nobody taught me and all so that self learning is unsupervised learning. So what does it mean is you will be given data, but you will not be told what the output is going to be. That means I give you a feature like okay the shape of it. This particular animal has a tail. This particular animal has two eyes four legs. But I will not tell you when all this feature feature maps. What is the output? Is it a dog or a cat? I will not tell you. It is like just you have the input data. That's all from there. You have to figure out that is what unsupervised learning. you'd have. You don't have any guidance about it. Okay. Now it comes to reinforcement learning in this case. You don't have data at all. That means there is no data set. There's no data set concept. Now. How do you learn from it here? The learning happens by experience. There are learning happens in two ways. One is exploration and is exploitation. Exploration. So when we say exploration and exploitation, it is all about what reinforcement learning does is it learns over a period of time by experience. Let's say you are going by a car and when you hit a path, like let's say for example, you crossing a road. When you cross a road first time, let's say that's the first time you are crossing the road. First time you might do some mistakes. But over a period, when you keep crossing the same traffic road, you will understand how to cross it properly. That means what is happening? Over a period of time your knowledge gets matured and you are in a level to cross the road properly. That's actually called reinforcement learning because you are learning by experiment and then applying it at the same time you might try new different ways to cross the traffic in a faster way. So this is called reinforcement learning and your sentiment analysis comes with your supervised learning. Okay now why sentiment analysis like why sentiment analysis because as we all answered we want to understand the customers emotions. Because that's where you understand what is that customer is talking about your product whether it's an application or product. What is that customer is talking about that you will come to know like your the customer emotion could be happy unhappy or very angry. It could happen in either of this and you see most of these chatbots today also take these responses and they literally mine it. I mean that they literally understand the data from the customers and even sometimes I'm not sure whether you know try to give a bad rating in any app you will immediately get a call. You might have tried the same app guys customer care by trying calling them multiple times they might not have responded but give a bad response completely zero they will immediately give a call. Okay like for example I used to see in LinkedIn where people complain Uber never responds or Ola never responds even we call them multiple times about camp com cab complaints try to give a very very bad response very bad response immediately you will get a call. I'm just telling people are not with the intent of you should play these tricks, but what I am trying to call out is people are really worried about customer emotions. Just that we are not hitting the right thread there so that they are worried about what is our problem. That is what we need to do. Now, what is sentiment analysis here? So, sentiment analysis it's simply about understanding from a text or a, from a written text or image, it's understanding about what customer is thinking about, whether the reaction. The reaction will be three ways. If you try to categorize, it is positive, negative, or neutral. That is what overall we try to understand either from the text data or images like this. Now, how does it work? Now, here our focus is mainly on textual data, 
you can do even from images also but our focus is mainly on the text like for example if i say i'm happy from that sentence you should be able to say whether my reaction is positive or i am scolding somebody or my reaction is neutral but i when i say i am happy it means my reaction is positive so that is what we want to do here so how it is going to work is you will have some set of positive words and negative words in the database obviously you might have guessed what is the positive words and what you do is you will rate it saying whenever user gives plus one based on the sentence you mark if you understand the emotion you will mark it as plus one for good uh, positive review zero for neutral and minus one for bad that is how you categorize now let's say this is a sample statement how does the words actually internally works is they break into tokens it is called to word tokenization when i say word tokenization it is nothing but breaking the sentence into multiple separate words so once you let's say this is the sentence the iphone is awesome now you have some set of positive words in your database and you have some set of negative words in your database from these words once you split this tokenize it that means you will get the iphone 7 is awesome four words you get you will check which are the words which you don't want there are some stop words also which you will remove then you will figure out the right word and you will remove these punctuation symbols also then you will check are they in this bucket or in this bucket since in this bucket you will say it is a positive that's why you are giving plus one and sometimes your sentence could be like this also the movie is not great after the interval it was boring now when you take it this not is a negative emotion it means minus one and great means it's a positive emotion it means plus one and boring means minus one then it means minus one plus one zero zero minus one minus one that means it's overall a negative score that's how we do it but there are scenarios where it will be really difficult something like this the service was terrible but the food was great now how do you tell it now in this case this is called constructive conjunction what we do is sometimes we break that into two sentences and we get the scores independently this type of strategy we apply is called binary sentiment analysis where we take the sentiment of this obviously this sentiment says that it is a negative response and this sentence says that it's a positive response so based on these two we arrive and we will decide whether to say it's a positive or not now how does it help in python for all the sentiment analysis obviously we discussed about it overall how sentiment analysis works it's not just for python any language overall it's a conceptual thing right uh, sentiment analysis is not something tied with python just that we are doing in python does not mean only python can do you can even do in java also provided you have the required libraries it's all to understand market strategy so that market understand how to sell some products based on the customer feedback it is also to understand the return of interest by doing certain marketing campaigns it is also to improve product quality like i said the alexa or kindle they understand customer sentiment and based on that they improve a lot of they fix a lot of bugs and they improve a lot of features and overall this is what the end goal is it's all about customer okay so i'll sh quickly show you a small hands-on which i have already prepared if i run in the class it will take some time so if you see i got a data set called reviews and this reviews data set has information like this where customer says something and summary is something and this is where he gives a score five one four two five something like that now from this what i do is generally if i want to do this kind of identifying whether it's a positive or negative score first i will try to do a histogram to see what kind of scores are there so i can see one two three four five so there are a lot of positive scores here this is what i understand from it this is just for my understanding now in order to parse this text and understand the customer emotion i need a library called nltk which is called natural language processing toolkit generally if i understand if i run in the class it will take it a lot of time so that's why i just ran it and kept it like that so that i can show you how it works because it downloads a lot of libraries which are required a lot of sub libraries inside and once i do it what i am doing is i am just importing it has a lot of corpus on the stop words stop words are nothing but which are not important and doesn't mean much like it off in like that those are stop words those also i can remove that's what i am removing and at the same time i am adding these two as stop words br and href which i consider as stop words and i am removing it and this is called word cloud it will just display the set of words i'm just looking at what are the set of words we have then what i am doing is based on the reviews if you see there are one two three four five so here i am writing code saying you just apply the sentiment as one that means a positive score whenever the rating the review is above three if the review is less than three i consider that as a minus one that is what i have decided as you can see i have written the same 
that means anything above three i consider it as positive that means four and five review customer has given i consider it as a positive sentiment if they have given one two three i will consider it as a negative sentiment so that's what i am doing here and after doing here i'm just putting a word cloud on what kind of word cloud can come this is just for positive words from the data it is already provided from the data set and this is for the negative words yeah this is for negative words and once i do it and this is where i'm just building something and uh, putting it instead of minus one and plus one i'm just putting negative and positive so that it is more easily to understand and i just put a graph so it shows that there are a lot of positive rating than negative ratings and now i'm done with my job now i know there are a lot of positive if somebody asks me how many users have given positive rating i can say 400 close to 450k and how many users given negative rating so I can say it is 60k. That's how I determine from the data whether it's a positive or negative and I can do even more something like I have added later like uh, here itself we can get this job done. But if you want to do even more you can filter out the data by removing the punctuation and all and not only that you can even easily query on how many sentiments are positive here. I'm just showing a summary data and if you want to do this automatically over a period of time rather than you doing this manually. You can even write an ML which I am using a logistic regression here where you can train it and automatically it will take care of doing all this whatever I have done automatically. That's how it works. Okay, so it's all about if you want to get it done automatically you will put an ML model but if you have done manually you can finish your job here itself. Okay, that's it. So I have a few more topics here and one thing. Yeah, so we have this particular course which actually this is called Python certification training. If at all you want to learn about, you know, uh, Python, let's say you guys are very new to Python and you want to learn from this is the course we offer in Edureka, which you can take a screenshot and if you are interested, you can talk to our support guys. Okay, thank you guys. It's great talking to you. See you all.